Uno. Yeah, Uno. Did you prefer yeah. that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same with three James Joyce. No, oh yeah, forgot about that, lad. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Cavan, <laughs> didn't that? Oh, what's the word of you? Hey, uh, so here we are today with Eddie Lenahan, one of Ireland's greatest storytellers. And we're absolutely privileged to be here with Eddie. And I'm sure most of you have seen our clips on our social media platforms where we're using Eddie's footage. And um, it's absolutely a pleasure to be actually sitting here with you today, Eddie. And we thank you for um, giving us your time. And we have Anthony here and Ronan. Anthony, how are you doing? How are you doing? Great pleasure to be here with one of Ireland's greats, Eddie Lenahan. I've watched him all my life as a kid. And it's a pleasure to meet the man today, he says. So, look, I'm just going to get straight to the point, Eddie. And I believe what's caught our attention, um, as you know, we, we focus on folklore, mythology, history and paranormal. And, look, to be honest, Eddie, we, we, we've been carrying out investigations uh, the last few years, we are capturing images that we believe that are some are human form, but we have to be honest, there's some that just don't look human at all. They're like entities, beings, mm. and you yourself, who's got a wealth of knowledge and folklore, we do believe that, you know, we are capturing fairies. Do you know, when, when I say fairies, Eddie, they're not little wing flying creatures or not. These are, these are, Beings, Anthony, that we feel that come from another dimension. That's what we were trying to say. Yeah, they're, they're, it depends on the areas we're in. If we're in a place that's steeped in uh, fairy mythology and folklore, we're catching imagery which would suggest to us that they possibly could be from the fairy realm. And uh, like we we totally respect this, and we mm-hmm. don't uh, <coughs> we'd say disparage against them in any way or say but anything what, bad about. What, why should you? No, we don't. We, we, plus, we also thank them afterwards, believe it or not, when we leave. And we have to say, thank you very much. I hope we didn't upset mm-hmm. any of the area or anything like yes. that. Which is, um, yes. And so you should. So you with should. Respect we have see, we're, only a, we're only small beings passing through. Mm. Passing through. And it behoves us, in my opinion, from 47 years collecting these stories, to. I won't say I know anything, because I tell you, none of us know much. No. None of us know much. And I would say, from listening to the old people talking, that that the world is a much bigger place than any one of us. <laughs> or bigger than most of us put together. And we'll say that the fairies, or the other world, or this world. Mm. We don't know much about it. And we should be very, very humble when we look around us and even think about such things as things that happened, happened. Because most of us don't even know our own history, Mm. things we should know about that have no element of the other world at all about them. When we consider back on an event, we'll say like the famine, where one and a half, maybe two million Irish people met their end, Mm. uh, off of their own country, placed as they were familiar with, they lived in a plot of ground that belonged to them, (laughs) maybe not very securely. Mm. Not very securely for most of them. They were only eking out a bare living in the place. We, we, we don't know the misery of most of them. No. Uh, if they had a garden like that, they were rich people. Oh, very rich. And we let it go overgrown. No, no that isn't particularly overgrown. We have a great look. You can look out there at the apple tree. Yeah. Yeah. They're all clear. Do you believe there's any. Uh, mythology attached to the caves or any beings that might live in them? Or I heard stories about them, of course. The caves of the White Horses, of course. Could you tell us about that? Well, the, the caves of the White Horses, they're back. Oh, have you come across them? Yeah, I'm sure you have. Uh, the belief was there that certain times, days, 
white hostas came out of the caves and and they could be seen, they could be seen, the white hostas would come out of the caves and they would go back of course into the caves and many people saw them. Now, cynics of course, all yeah. the cynics would oh, say yeah. that this was because Clare is full of underground rivers right. because of the uh, because of the, the, the limestone okay. and it is true, yeah. it is full of underground rivers mm. uh, but this was when there'd be wet weather in parts of the burn mm. there might be dry weather in other places yeah. you know, downpours, <coughs> downpours, <coughs> downpours anywhere and there could be dry weather 10 miles away yeah. But this was the underground water from that downpour making its way underground and it would come out in a dash in a like white horses in the sea. White horses <laughs> coming out, and out <coughs> there yeah. in a waterfall. Yeah. Which is a lovely, lovely thing that, that this was people's way of accounting for uh, the waterfall coming out of the cave. Yeah. Which makes it so dangerous to go into these caves. Yeah. Because you could be suddenly drowned inside in the caves. Yeah. Washed yes. away. Washed away. Trapped. Trapped and robbed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eddie, is there any um, um, history, is it, do you know any history about the uh, polka uh, in Alwee Caves? Have you ever heard of that? A polka in the Alwee Cave? Yeah, Alwee Cave. No, sir, not no. in the Alwee Cave. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of history, of course, of the polka here, there and elsewhere. Well, not just in Clare, but all over Ireland. Yeah. Right here in this parish. Mm. There's a town man called Kaharafuka. Yeah. Oh, right. Kaharafuka. Yeah. Uh, when yeah, you, when yeah. you were coming here, town of the polka. Yeah. Well, Cahar, no, Cahar is a, a fort, a stone fort. Fort. Okay. fort. Uh, polka in fort, and it's like a fort of the polka. Yes, yeah, yes. And when you came here, did you come under the railway bridge? Yes, yes. Did, yeah. Yeah. That is the town land of Cahar of Polka. All oh, right. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just there, uh, and uh, obviously there was a stone fort. I think the fort is gone because any one of these uh, forts would have been very handy for building materials mm, yeah. that would take the stones. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas a, a, a fairy fort, uh, a regular fort, wouldn't be so easy to dig out and mm. people wouldn't do it anywhere. No. Because to dig a fort in the old days before diggers came on the yeah, scene, yeah. Yeah. well, you had to do it with a spade. Mm. In your hands, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Very bad luck about that. You have plenty of time to be thinking about what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. Whereas today with a digger. It's done in a day. Done in a day, done in an hour. Yeah. Uh, but even then, most people won't do it. Mm. Because they know what they're doing. Except in the case of somebody who's just hired to do the job. And unfortunately, that's growing what's numbers, happening. that's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. It's just a contract job. Yeah. Uh, they get somebody that doesn't care. Exactly. I'll do it, no problem. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Pay the money, yeah. the money, yeah. That's right, and that's Ireland. Ireland, increasingly the Ireland we've come to see. Eddie, can we, um, can I just let, I want to let you know what we had done last, in August, two months ago, we travelled to uh, Lackeen Castle, Burr County Tipperary. Right. And that was formerly, I mean, the O'Kennedys, the clan, O'Kennedy clan, formerly lived, resided there. And there's history attached to that castle and the uh, polka itself. Um, it was believed that the O'Kennedy clan had captured the polka. Now this is going reading through the history. Uh, we we found that fascinating um, as a as a group that we went down to do an investigation there, and we took uh, lots of images. Uh, there was one image that we found quite fascinating, and even we spotted it straight away. It was like a little face. It looked like a um, like half wolf, like a dog looking, looking like a face, look peering out from the window inside, the doorway inside the actual castle. We have a second picture that clearly shows the same picture of the area, but that face wasn't in the second picture. When we came back, I just want to let you have a look at that picture too, Eddie. When we came, finished off, the, uh, that night too, we were getting this swirling wound inside the castle, and there was no... What's the word we can explain that there was actually no windows that were all the windows were, were, were plastic up or plastic perspex and uh, we were inside in the top half of it but there was no couldn't be any draft but it was like there was a whirlwind going around with leaves and uh, crevices from the pigeons and we just we were just doing this but it wasn't until we were finished talking that we realized 
Hold on a second. There is no doors open here. There are no windows. All the windows are sealed up with plastic. So it, it was very unusual for us, and, and we didn't cop onto it until afterwards. We would say, what was all that about? And the drive, uh, Eric, when we, yeah, literally, when we left, when we, left we mm -hmm. were literally driving um, about five minutes out of down the road. And it was only me, I was driving myself, and for some reason, I'd heard of myself, it was like an orangey red eyes in the middle of the road. And hands down, hands to God, this is God's honest truth, yeah. these two guys were in the car with me. And I spotted in the distance, and I actually slowed right down because I was thinking it's an animal there because I don't want to run the animal over. And this, God's honest truth, Betty, in the middle of the road was a black cat. <laughs> and the black cat did not move. It actually made me come to a stop. Yes. And it locked up. That's right. And it just walked into the hedge. Yeah. And, it, and that was, we found out. It, it had reddish eyes in it. That's what I said, orangey reddy. Yeah. Like an orangey red and off the chart. The three of us were staring, looking at it. Where did that guy come out of? And the, the, the two big. And then he went off into the bushes and. I mean, yeah, they, most cats see a car, they will stamper or clamber yeah. away, and, and in the distance, this I could see it. Luckily, it stopped us. It actually made Just us when we stop. came out of the castle to go down the road, there it was. Mm. Stopping us in, the, in, in our tracks after the wind was. I was going show that in this picture. You know? yeah, <laughs> so we come across an awful lot of stuff like this, Eddie, yeah. and we can't explain it. Well, I. My. What did I say? My interests are slightly different. I would too, but I record the stories mm. and I leave them. Mm. I'm interested in that. I, be, For example, now I met a man who's dead now, but he told me he was out one night uh, with two other men that were coming home from a card play. Uh, this would be down in West Limerick. And they were joined by another man. Mm. I didn't know him. I saw him clearly. Uh, he didn't speak. He was dressed normally, but with an old style bowler hat, you know, the old bowler yeah. hats. And the, the thought, first of all, that he was. They didn't know. That he, he would speak, but he didn't. And he walked along with them step for step for step until they came to a little stream across the road. It was only a by road. Mm. And there was there was a boreen uh, and there was a small little stream across the road and gone. Disappeared. Never spoke, no nothing. Once they came to the little stream though he just obviously couldn't cross that stream. Mm. And it happened another day as well. And they all looked at him. Who is this? Well, you go. Yeah. But they all saw him. And the man that told it to me said, oh, yes, he said, if, if it was myself, I'd, I'd say that I was seeing things. Or that we had too many games too of many. cards played yeah, and yeah. that I was just tired. Yeah. But there was no drink in the house. Yeah. No, it was a card play. They were coming from a house, no, yeah. not a pub. Yeah. Because they wouldn't be playing cards in a pub that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't have the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he said, I met him another night, and it was the same thing, you know, they were taken aback. Who, who is this man? But they went to the, well, they didn't, but he went to the priest after. Mm. Just, you know, he, he was worried, mm. because he always had heard that something like that, if you met it, there's somebody in trouble. Mm. And the priest, the priest didn't ask him for money. But the priest said, look, he said, leave that to me. That man is, that man is in, in bother. Mm -hmm. And he came back, the priest came back and he, at the place. Strange. Nothing after. Yeah. <coughs> really, that's the picture I want to let you see. I'll play it and let you see if you can hold it. Um, yes, it certainly looks like somebody looking out. Doesn't it? A person. Yeah. It? And, and we picked that up, we never stipulate what what it is, we just picked it up on the social media page, Facebook. And the comments were phenomenal, people were saying it looks like a half wolf, half dog looking face, peering out. Um, or, or just a person. Just a person, and sorry, that's the next picture, nothing there really. That's the same. 
Well, that could be a, merely be a, a different time and all that the person had gone away. Yeah, but you can't get in behind those railings. You can't get in there. That's completely like sealed up, boarded up. Yeah, I mean, was, these were little rooms that are in the castle that are boarded up by the uh, right. local council. And the right. We found it very strange, Eddie. Or barred up, I should say. And that castle, as I said, has been... It's what's legends or we're laying the around this. Is the castle used anymore? No. 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 Oh. No. It's uh, but that's the castle of the Puka, right. Lacking Castle. And the Burr, quite the temporary. Yeah. Right. And that's what we find quite strange, um, Eddie. And uh, funny enough, Eddie, when we talk about uh, Lacking Castle, we were there about a year ago too, and we done an experiment with smoke, because we believe um, if there is energy, spirits or any beings that want to be let themselves be seen, they can. They can show themselves through smoke, like the Native American, you know, the Native um, Americans, what they used to do when they were, you know, trying to communicate with the spirits. They used smoke. So we done that little experiment, and we took lots of pictures and different angles. And there's a picture, and what's it look like? And somebody, it comes from the thousands of years old. Like it looks like one of those, like from what you'd say, like from the Bronze Age or something. There, caveman, type caveman of type of a person, a yeah. Neanderthal sort of. And that's why, Eddie, what we do, we believe that, you know, we are, we focus on paranormal, um, and, and we believe that we're, 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 we are capturing images of energy that's been on this earth thousands and thousands of years ago. Why do we all assume that we're capturing something that's only 10 or 20 years old, or it's a human being? We believe we are capturing, um, and we believe, Eddie, when we talk about folklore, People have experienced these by their own eyes, but unfortunately they didn't have the technology, what we have today, cameras being one of them, that can actually capture these brief glimpses. And I believe that this energy, we call it energy, is very intelligent, it's highly intelligent, and knows that when we're about to go out to do these investigations, we tend to capture most of our evidence within the first half hour, because we're dealing with intellectual beings. They know about what we're doing. And they don't like to be seen. Some don't like to be caught, captured in camera. No. And that's what we gather. A lot of them are in the dark areas of the photographs that we take. And if you brighten them up, you can see imagery in the dark. Um, we've also come to the conclusion that people, like a lot of religions, believe that when the person dies, their energy is imparted into the elements around them. So we believe that people, these people would have died on sight. Or uh, whatever they, whatever happened to them, and their energies imparted into the stone or the trees of the area around them, and we can catch glimpses of that now and again through our invest investigations. We're trying to, we say, one hundred percent prove that is very hard and difficult for us, because there is no real proper science in what we do. Mm. I mean, you can't go to a university and get a degree in, in this type of thing, you know. Well, so we have stories that, that yourself has been telling, especially in relation to the fairy world, you know? Yeah. So we're trying to figure out, have you any, uh, in the stories that you've told, um, is there any maybe belief you have yourself or that people, um, apart from the story you told a while ago, uh, that would maybe have more proof as to why we're capturing stuff, you know? Well... I would say that it's a cultural thing, certainly. And the stories that people told long ago is partly because they believed that people live on after their death. Mm. And that's related, of course, to where the fairies came from, uh, which is the first question you have to answer <laughs> if you want to find out, or certainly ask. Who are the fairies? And there's some stories that say they are the angels who were thrown out of heaven. Okay. That uh, presumes, of course, that people believed in heaven and hell, uh, which is a Christian thing. But there are other religions who would also have the same belief because mm. the Muslims have their own version of the fairies, mm. the Japanese have their version of the fairies, and every culture on earth has their belief in the fairies under different names. Uh, they, if you believe 
in the fairies. Well then, I would assume that you have to believe in God and the other way around. <coughs> if you believe in God, you have to believe in the fairies because they're both of the other world. Mm -hmm. Lots of people don't, they don't, yeah. they don't like to hear that. Would your uh, um, description of fairies have them with wings and that kind of stuff? No, no. no that's a lot of nonsense. Yeah, that's just a Hollywood type of a thing, is it? Well, it isn't. that comes from Arthur Rackham. And his, and his... Who? Arthur Rackham. Arthur Rackham. He was the uh, artist in the Victorian times who painted them as these little quaint, little mm -hmm. half ugly, half quaint, half funny creatures um, <coughs> that you'll often see uh, you know, cuddled up in yeah, with the wings, odd like that. Forms, yeah. wings and half a childish, half you know, gruesome figures. But no, I remember a man, he's only did about two and a half years, wonderful man he was. He was one of those very few people that you'll find I've only found about five of them in 47 years collecting stories that you never get the end of their stories, no matter how you, how long you keep collecting. But he, <laughs> he was a funny man, funny and interesting together. He never married. The whole house was filthy, oh, filthy, not stinking filthy at all. Now, but it would be an open fireplace and a house like that is always full of dust, as mm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, soot and, and all, all, all tough ashes. Mm. Yeah. But uh, he'd always welcome me with a glass of whiskey. And I like meat. Yeah. And I, I don't drink whiskey, I drink Guinness. But uh, I couldn't I couldn't refuse because well, he was old Stein man yeah, yeah. and you, you can't refuse. That was his way of saying welcome. And I'd be always looking for a way of spinning his hooks into the ashes. <laughs> Give him to the dog. <laughs> and get rid of it. <coughs> I had to drive home. But, uh, God, he was a wonderful man to talk and reminisce. He, he could remember back to before the famine. Mm. Before the famine. i tell you a story now once I can remember. Remind me. But he met the fairies. Okay. And, I, and I believed him, I believed him, because he was that kind of a man. And of course I asked him, make, make, I said, what, what, what do they look like? And I always remember the way he looked into the fire. And he didn't answer me directly, but eventually he did. Mm. And he looked at me and he said, he said, the person sitting beside you, he said, could be one of them. And you wouldn't know it. Right. They can so they look like us. Shapeshifters, Eddie. Yeah. They can be, <coughs> they could be like uh, your dog. They could be. And very often they do take the shape of a dog. Black, a black dog. Mm. Completely, <coughs> completely black. Not a white hair on him. Mm. From his snout to his tail. So. They, they, they Very interesting. They can take. A, <coughs> it's uh, it's uh, it can sometimes be more natural. Yes. Natural based, like tribal religions, yes. like the Aboriginals or the Native Australians, call them what you will. Yeah. Um, or the Native Americans or the various African religions. What right had we, in a sense, to Christianize them? Can mm. I ask you, uh, Eddie? Uh, your opinion of a druid, what what would that, if you were to give a description of a druid? What the druids that? were the kind of, as far as I know, and the Hyoho Gawain was a man, God rest the man, he was a man who knew a lot about them from his folklore studies. There were men who used the hazel tree mm. uh, very much. They were, they were very well respected by the Irish uh, clans tribes, call them what you will, in, in the old Ireland before the British or the English tried to interfere as they did mm -hmm. and impose a centralised government, which they did because of the Irish stupidity in fighting each other as they always yeah, did. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they were the ones who foretold the future 
they were the ones who were there when big decisions had to be made of a magical kind of a nature. Mm. Uh, magic now in its wider sense, uh, not in this notion of making spells mm. in, in any, any kind of foolish way as the word is understood today, mm. but making spells, uh, making spells to guide people, mm. to guide people, mm. to do what was, what was best for themselves mm. in the future. The Druids had a long training. Fourteen years of training. Yeah, they had a long training yeah. in knowing plants, in knowing yeah. all of the... And if you know plants, mm. you have to know the landscape that mm. plants come from. So they were well-trained people. Mm. Educated and people. Absolutely, they were the educated people of their time. They were the educated class of the time. They'd be like a consultant today. Yeah. Be a consultant. You were Ben McGrady. <coughs> ben McGrady, the last root. I, Ben McBrady. He would probably mock Brodin. Oh, for whom? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. He, I mean, I watched a little program by him and it was very interesting. Um, you know, they explained 14 years of training. He was going to be told to go in to, to be a priest, but he, other uncle had other plans for him, put him to into the Druid Order, they called it the Order, the last order. And, um, it was. It's, it's actually amazing, like you said. And one thing, Eddie, maybe if you can shed a bit of light on this, you know all these um, these stone features we have all around. You know, up, like the monuments, you know, the things, mm. <coughs> like, like the what do you call it, the port? You know, the port the portal stones. Uh, yeah. No, up in the burn. No. Well, the dolmens. Dolmens. You no, know, all these. Like maybe he. I don't know if he is right, but he said that obviously, you know, these these were very smart people. Like you explained. And he reckons some of these, like, like bomb shelters, because asteroids and stuff, where they, they protect, they build these little, they protect themselves. I don't know if there's any truth in that, Eddie Fox. I, I doubt it's somewhat. No, I don't know. No. Neither they were. But certainly they were great geometricians. Yes, that's it, yes. Because they were able to judge the, the way the sun would shine on a particular day. Mm -hmm. And you don't do that without a knowledge of the stars yeah, and yeah. the way the stars obviously will shine and the way the sun will shine on, on a day like May Day and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. The solstices. The solstices. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were, they obviously worked their way by the heavens. Yeah, they were, that's exactly what Eddie's just they explained, did. yes. Well, yeah. they, they were, there were people who, who were, they were very well educated. They were well educated people. By, Possibly by a knowledge that would have been handed down over thousands of years to them. Well, no doubt. No doubt. But you see, there's something else. Even this comes down in stories. We have lost this and we'll never get it back. Right up to the 19th century and the early 20th century, people lived in a dark countryside. No lights. No lights. Yes. And they could see the stars. We, we don't see the there, stars no. now. No. There is no dark countryside left. Not like they did. No. Mm. No. <coughs> and and it must have been a, a when you came out of a kitchen where there had been a good storyteller telling a story mm. and to make your way home, for example, mm. after hearing a good ghost story mm. and have to make your way home <laughs> if the storyteller had, and, and they would have known all of the people there yeah. and known that you were a person that was easy to frighten and that yeah. you had to go home past some place that was supposedly haunted, an old house or a crossroads or an old ruin of a castle yeah. or better again, the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there was a couple of the bios in the audience who <laughs> off yeah. to the graveyard to be there in front of you yeah, to be yeah. inside you. My grandmother used to do that to us yes, when we were kids. Course, yeah. Yeah. And she was notorious. Yeah. She would sit like you in the seat and we'd be six yeah. and seven years of age all sitting around. Yeah. And then she'd send us to bed. Yeah. But, I mean, but you know, I was terrified. You, would, but you, you see, you could do it to old people, older people. I know, I know this man. 
and I remember him well. I have his story there on recording. And now this was a man. This was a man that you wouldn't frighten at night. And these were the the stories that would convince you. You see, it was easy to frighten fellows that were frightenable. Yeah. But what would you do with the man that you couldn't frighten? That if you frightened to, uh, to try try to frighten, you know, he'd turn in the dark. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus, yeah. <laughs> 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 sorry, Mike, and I didn't know that was the well, You know, that was a different man. Yeah, the yeah. man that was used to being out at night at sessions and card plays and all the right. rest of it. You know, there was there was men you could frighten and yeah, men you wouldn't could, frighten. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, this man, I shot in the story. He was crazy about cards, and he was coming home one particular night after winning a few pence. You know, the price mm. the price of eggs. You know, the price of Five flags for truppins that time. Yeah. That's the way they used to buy them. Wood yeah. binds, you know, coffee yeah. Yeah. And and he was coming home bright night and he had one field to cross. You know, it was all styles across ditch at that time. Yeah. You wouldn't go walking around the road if you could take a shortcut. Yeah. But he had only one field to go. You could see the light in the kitchen mm. at home. And he was crossing this big field. I know the field, but in my own place belong Kerry. And it was about a third of the way across when he, he saw the movement coming that side of him and he looked and there was four men carrying a coffin. Now he stopped, mm. he stopped because he knew of course that you know, there used to be a black out for fuck's sake, there'd be fellas out at night trying to frighten yeah, yeah, fellas yeah, yeah. and often you get four fellas carrying a box, carrying yeah, a yeah. box above their shoulders trying yeah. to frighten you, but you wouldn't frighten this man. Mm -hmm. Garrett McAuliffe was his name, and he stopped to watch to see what would happen. And they just walked in front of him on that way because there was another stile there and a crossroads beyond it, yeah. wherever they were going. And he waited, not a sound. But as they passed in front of him, about 20 feet in front of him, Jesus here recognised two of them, the ones that were nearest to him, yeah. carrying the coffin. Yeah. And there were two men from the parish did he had recognized them because they were when, dead. They, when they were alive yeah yeah there were men from the parish he says, he says, i nearly pissed myself <laughs> 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 if i wanted to run myself i couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> my yeah, legs wouldn't yeah, take yeah. me but they said nothing walked on and out over the stile there and about that business well by jesus he said that's the time i ran and out that side and now there was a gate here and a little boarding up to our house and he said there was only three of us in the house at the time our parents were dead myself my brother and my sister and I up the boarding but not before he says the gate there was a man standing at the gate a man i didn't know and not my brother a man i didn't know and of course i stopped who the hell was this and he just opened the gate for me, right, mannerly, because I kept over to this side. <laughs> 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 and up the morning with me like there was greyhounds after me. And in the door, I nearly took the door with me <laughs> into the kitchen. And there was my sister at the fireside. And her head down, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And she said, about a half an hour before she had got the news, that our brother was dead. About a mile away, a horse jumped out over a ditch, struck him with his hooves, killed him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he never forgot that night, mm. because who was the man at the gate? The two men under the coffin he recognised, yeah. even though he didn't want to see them yeah. on mm. that. But who was the man at the gate? Now the story, as he was telling it to me, was 50 years later. Mm. But he had never, ever forgotten that night. And he still didn't know who the man at the gate was? No. And I believed him because what kind of a man would be telling a story like that about his yeah, own Yeah, that's family? a very descriptive story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, he never, he, God rest him, and he's dead now. Mm. And his son is dead. But I have that story there on, mm. on, on tape. So, I mean, was he telling me lies? I, d I doubt it. I very mm. much doubt it. He'd be a very strange man if he was taking Well, you'd have to that. take it that he did see something that oh, night. I did see something <laughs> that night. And that was his description of it. His description of it, as clear as that.
So I, I, I always take these stories on the f three things. Either a, a person is lying, mm -hmm. or telling the truth, or they're mistaken. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What more can you say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But things do happen. Things do happen, and people do genuinely see things. Oh, they do. Sometimes they're mistaken, yeah. and there can be coincidence. But sometimes, when coincidence has happened, and happen and happen and happen at a particular place, then it's not a coincidence anymore. No, it's not. No. We can s safely say to you, Eddie, from our experiences, that if you're out at night time in some place scary mm. and you think there is somebody watching you, we can definitely say to you that there is. Or more than likely. There yeah. is someone or something watching <laughs> you, whatever it might be. Yeah. Now, on the other side of that, Ireland is a small country and in this country every single inch of it has been travelled mm. again and again and again mm. by somebody back and back and back along. Yeah. So it's bound to be that something good energy as well as bad yeah. has happened in every part of Ireland. Exactly, so it's yeah. not surprising that something should be be retained in that area. Be retained yeah. wherever you're putting your foot. Yeah. And that's why partly I think that for for just for example, things like the hungry grass on Fair Gothic mm. happen. Mm. That in in a particular place the fair, the hungry grass happens and the people were afraid of it at night. And the people used to keep that little bit of food or a sweet or something in their pockets long ago when they'd be travelling out at night. Would you like to explain a bit more about the hungry grass? And where well, the hungry from? grass on Fair Gothach in Irish was uh, when you when people were walking, of course, sure there's nobody walking now. No. Yes, people are taking their car nearly to bedroom. lazy. That people were walking and they were afraid that if they went off the little pathway at night, they might stand because the pathway was safe because yeah. at least yeah. on a pathway uh, people people were walking that so it was relatively safe we'll say yeah. but if you strayed off of that at night you might be straying onto anything in yeah. the field mm. so you might be straying onto the hungry grass and the hungry grass was that you you would get this terrible <coughs> feeling in your stomach as if you were starving, Star as if your stomach was collapsing in on itself and if you didn't get something into your mouth immediately, you'd be found dead there in the morning. Now some people believe that that was where somebody had died during the famine. Right. Okay. On that particular yeah. spot. The hungry grass. Yes. yes. And so many people died in fields, on the sides of the road, <coughs> in everywhere. During they, the were, they were feeling what they were going through. They were feeling exactly what they were going through. Mm. Moments that, before death. During, yeah. yeah. Mm. And believe it or not, mm. I would still carry a sweet or something else mm. in my pocket when I would be. Are, are there any when I would um, be traveling out specific me. areas that you could say this is the area of the hungry grass? I don't or remember. Is it just I, 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 I think, I think of a place. It was a place in Car, uh, down near my own place in Kerry, between Brosna and Mount Collins, where my uncle told me he experienced it. He was going home one night, uh, mm -hmm. just from a, something in Brosna, I think it was Johnny Game of Cards or something, mm -hmm. and he could see down below him, Mount Collins, you know, he was just mm -hmm. going home, and he must have stepped off the grass, uh, the path, yeah, which would grass. be no big deal, because yeah. the path, that would be very well marked. No. You want uh, on a dark night, you yeah. could just you could wander into that. You could wander mm. out here, out there, in your own garden. Mm. But he just managed to step off the path and he felt this. <laughs> now, now, again, cynics would say that, oh, it's, it's um, what's that thing you feel? What do cynics have a name for it? That is, it's, it's, there's a name for it that you get something in your stomach. A medical ailment, but cynics, cynics, yeah, um, cynics to say, will will have a name for everything. 
ulcers or no god no yeah. nothing like that it's a, a, a sort of a temporary thing uh, but uh, I don't believe that because this is a country-wide thing mm. and there's traditions about it mm -hmm. in every corner of Ireland yeah. and th always I say the old people weren't stupid mm. the old people they had to live in the country that they had to live in we live in our age mm. they lived in their age and they weren't stupid they we wouldn't live in what they had to live in and mm. they had to adapt to that and they were superbly good at that. Mm. They might not live well in our beep beep age, mm. but we were not <coughs> now in theirs. No. And they weren't stupid people. No. They were, we find anyway, uh, far more in tune with the elements around of them course than we are today. Of course they had to be. There's too much technology nowadays. Oh, Christ. That's it's messing it's people's awful. senses up. Yeah, awful. Because everybody has, we believe, a sixth sense in them. And yeah. Some people like to say, I'm a medium, but we think everybody has a bit of medium in them. And unfortunately, too much technology kills that in people. Well, it's not good for people. No. Too much technology is not good for people. And it's, how would I put it? It's, it's making life unnecessarily complicated. It's making, you, it's more or less saying to people, Without this technology, you're no, you're nothing. You can't think for yourself. You're useless, mm. and that is not so. That is not so. Yeah. I, I sometimes I feel that way myself. Good God Almighty! I go into town and I'm being presented with, unless you have your card with you, mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you're, you're some kind of a dummy. Yeah. You're an idiot. Yeah. I tell you, only recently I started using my card, mm. and now they're talking about getting rid of cash. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What kind yeah. of idiotcy is this? Yeah, it's silly. It's, it's, it's a sick society. It is, yeah. We live in a, a, a sick society. But you can't society. spend money unless we let you. That kind of that's thought. That's basically what it is. Oh, yeah. But who's behind this? Yeah. It's huge corporations. It's, it's, yeah, it's very individual. narcissistic. Oh, well, it's, it's worse than that. <clears throat> it's in 1984 style. Yeah. Or George Orwell. Yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. He yeah. was a smart man. He saw yeah. what was coming. It's like the... You know, when you look at it that way, we'll give you a certain amount of pocket money. Uh, which day. is, we'll give you a certain amount of freedom. Yeah, a certain amount of freedom. Yeah. You can't have any money in your pocket. That's right. It's not a free society anymore. No, it's not. It's, it's uh, a very so, controlling society. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 there's something horrible about it in a so-called democracies. Yeah, that's... Uh, there's no such thing as democracy, really, is there? No, no, no. Not in the sense of the Greek word demos. No. No. Or Leonard Cohen's song, Democracy is Coming to the USA. Ah, well, no, I'm not That was a bit of tongue in cheek, that. Oh, well, yeah. I got. That was good. Hmm? That was nice. That was a nice interview. Yeah. Because I think that's it. I think we're fine. We're happy with that. Good. Are you happy with that? Are you happy with that, Ed? Well, you edit it, you know, according to. Yeah. And, and will you do me a favour? Yes. By the yeah. way, and here's something for your thing about democracy. Oh, excuse sorry. me, excuse me. Oh. Um, the book, you know, the, the Meeting the Other Crown. Oh, yes. For oh, that man who spent nearly 30 